Here I want to do the example of rotating mass, and what I mean is I have a mass on a string that I'm rotating in a vertical circle. And I want to ask the question is what is the difference in tension between the mass at its lowest point of rotation and the highest? Now, I, I really like this, this problem because it, it uses so much of what we've done so far in the course. And so if you know, if you can really understand how to solve this problem, um, you've learned a lot. All right, so we have this mass. It's rotating in a vertical circle. And we want to find what is the difference in the tension in the rope between when it's at the bottom and when it's on the top, which I'll call T sub T. Okay, so I have a picture. I know what's going on. This thing is, is rotating in a circle. And now I want to say, okay, what sort of physics applies to this problem? I'm to just go through the, the brainstorming. This is a classic example of, of um, you know, there's no equation you're just going to write down to try to find this problem. We're going to have to brainstorm to try to come up with relationships that's going to solve this. So um, it's going in a circle. I, I might I might start with um, uh, Newton's laws that they apply to this problem. And so let's, let's look at um, uh, applying Newton's second law at the top and the bottom. So at the top, and again, this is all just brainstorming now. Um, what do I have? I have the forces on the object. Well, there's the, the tension, which is T sub T, tension at the top. It's pointing uh, in the down. And then I have the force due to gravity. That's pointing down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this uh, plus R my radially outward direction. And those are the only forces on, on this object. And so I can apply Newton's second law to this problem, so I have negative uh, in the in the r direction, magnitude of the tension t sub t minus the 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 force due to gravity, which is negative mass times g, since it's also pointing down. That's equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. So it's going through a, a vertical circle, and so I know that it's. Uh, uh, sorry, minus mg is equal to negative m omega squared r. Omega is the angular frequency, um, and so I can cancel my minus signs. I could also say that t sub t plus mg is equal to m v squared over r. That's another way that I can write my radial acceleration. Okay, so that that could be useful. I have an expression now uh, for my tension at the top in terms of other things. Um, this has some length, I guess, L, which is the radius R. It has some mass M, and it's going some speed. I, I don't really know what any of those are. Um, I don't know the speed. I'll say I, I, I know the mass, but what else is what else is going on? So let's look at uh, applying Newton's second laws to the bottom. And so in this case, I have, of course, the force due to gravity is still down. Now I have the tension, which is um, up, the tension at the when the object is at the bottom of its swing. It's in the other direction. Uh, I'm going to have my radial direction positive outward, as I am wont to do. So now everything is in one dimension. So if I just look at the components, I have a uh, positive mg. Uh, minus the tension at the bottom is equal to the mass times the acceleration. mg minus tension at the bottom, mass the acceleration is negative omega squared r. And so I might rewrite this tension at the bottom minus mg is equal to m v squared over r. So what about what about these v's? This is the velocity at the bottom. This is the velocity at the top. Those are not necessarily the same thing. In fact, we know they're not. Uh, if I look at these two expressions, I'm looking for the difference in these two tensions. Uh, mg is the same. 
uh, r, that's the length of the string, is the same. So it is, in fact, the velocity which is changing in each of these examples. Okay, so I want to know the difference here between these the uh, these tensions, tension at the bottom minus the tension at the top. Um, so if I were to, to write that out, tension at the bottom, uh, subtract these two equations, tension at the top, I get, um, well, is equal to minus 2mg. I'm taking this equation and subtracting the this equation up here, so tension at the bottom minus tension at the top minus mg minus mg gives me minus 2mg, and that is equal to uh, m over r, velocity at the bottom squared minus velocity at the top squared. Okay, so um, I have I can come up with an expression now for the difference, but but I don't really know uh, what this the speeds are yet. So I don't really have enough to to solve for what I want. Is there more physics that I can apply to this problem? Well, what about the energy of the system? I have the forces on the mass are the tension and gravity. Oh, gravity is a conservative force. Uh, what about the tension? Well, the tension is not a conservative force. But is the tension doing work on the system? And the answer is no. Everywhere the the tension is always uh, perpendicular to the the displacement, the perpendicular to the the infinitesimal displacement. And so the tension never does doesn't do any work on as on the the mass as the mass goes around in a circle so since the only force doing work is gravity and that's a conservative force that means mechanical energy is conserved so that allows us to apply conservation of energy to this problem so let's go ahead and do that okay so first of all we have um we need a uh, coordinate system for our gravity all right so for for I'm going to choose then the bottom location of the object to be the zero of my coordinate system for my gravitational force um, for looking at energy and then I have, have positive directed upward so in this case then come down here so my gravitational force has a functional form that's equal to negative m times g which i already know and given this choice of coordinate system i'm going to choose my zero of potential energy also to be at the bottom here zero of potential energy so with my zero potential energy at the zero of my coordinate system, my potential energy function is then positive mgx, okay? And so now I want to look at the energy at two points in time, when it's at the bottom and when it's at the top. So at the bottom, its potential energy is zero because it's x position is zero, that's how I define the potential energy function, and it has some kinetic energy, which is one-half times the mass times the velocity, which is the velocity at the bottom squared. So at the top, now, it has gravitational potential energy, which is equal to um, mg times the height above the uh, the, the zero of my coordinate system, which is 2r, right? The length of the string is what I'm calling r, so mg times 2r, and it has kinetic energy, which is 1 half m times the velocity at the top squared. So since I have uh, energy is conserved, this energy must equal that energy, and so I have 1 half m velocity at the bottom squared, my kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to my kinetic energy at the top plus the potential energy that it gets at the top which is 2 mgr. 
So it looks like I'm going to be able to uh, come up with an expression for the difference between, from here, the velocity at the bottom squared minus velocity at the top squared. That's what I need to, to put into here. So that's why it was good to sort of play around with my equations, kind of see, see what I need, because now that I can, I can identify exactly that, given the second relationship that I got using conservation of energy. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by 2 over m, I get uh, VB bottom, velocity at the bottom squared is equal to velocity at top squared plus uh, 4GR. So I multiply both sides by uh, 2 over M. And so then that says that velocity at the bottom squared minus velocity at the top squared is equal to 4GR. All right, so it looks like we're getting there. I can plug this into there and so I get tension at the bottom minus tension at the top is equal to bring the 2mg on the other side plus m over r times 4gr r's cancel I get 4mg plus 2mg is equal to 6mg so the difference between the tension and the bottom of the top is six times the mass times gravity. And to do that, we needed um, our circular motion knowledge as well as Newton's second law for circular motion. We applied Newton's second law at both places, as well as then conserving energy at the top of the bottom, which we could do because the only forces doing work on the mass were conservative.